Hello and welcome to the start of the 48 hour Romanticy Readathon reading vlog. It is the day before we start and I wanted to come on here because my makeup was actually cute for once because usually when I get home from work, like I work out after work, so then I don't always look cute after work, but today I didn't work out, so I, I look good, you know? So let's talk about what I'm planning to read in Streetathon. I also am trying out like more natural lighting since there's actually some light outside. Um, for my sit down videos, I have like my ring light on and it's usually so harsh, so hopefully it's not too dark. I think it will still look good just seeing what I'm seeing, but production note I guess. So some exciting things. The first book I'm reading right now and honestly I'm kind of addicted to it so I didn't have it on my readathon TBR but I really wanted to read it because it's coming out I think tomorrow and that is Feathers from the Sky by Jess Wisecup and Jess Wisecup wrote Between Wrath and Mercy which is this bad boy here. This book is like an epic high fantasy and it is about Emmeline. She's a mother and basically like her daughter is the chosen one and her daughter gets kidnapped and she has to reunite with her lost love who is a prince to rescue her and I love this book because there are not a lot of fantasy stories about like mothers and women in their 30s and main characters in their 30s and Jess's writing is really really amazing. I honestly was surprised when I learned that this was the first ever book that she had written because it seems like her craft has taken years to hone and I think she just has a very natural ability to write very very well and I love this book. I have not read the sequel yet because I am who I am. I'm so excited for this series and I think the series is so good. So so good. Like this first book was amazing and I am excited to read the second book and this is if you're looking for a fantasy romance with a lot of spice but a lot of intricate world building as well because there are some, this is how I view it, right? There are some fantasy romances that veer more romance, less world building, some that veer more world building fantasy and the romance takes a little bit of a backseat and those are more like romantic fantasies and there can be like a mix of them and then there's some that kind of strike the balance in the middle where there's a lot of spice but there's a lot of world building and I like all three but it's just kind of good to know what you're getting into but this one I think kind of perfectly hits all the nails on the head. So anyway, so this is her book. I'm not reading the sequel in this vlog because it's really long, which is not, not great for a 48 hour readathon, you know? But currently I'm 47% of the way through Feathers from the Sky and this book is so cool. It's for a paranormal romance, but we have Gwen and basically her life is falling apart. Her parents died a year ago in a car crash. Her ex cheated on her. Like she's just at a really low point in her life. And then we have Roman who's a vampire and Gwyn's father killed his mother. And it's because Gwyn's father was a vampire hunter. So Gwyn doesn't know that she's like a vampire hunter which is a kind of supernatural creature. So like her blood is like really attractive to Roman and so Roman's kind of like stalking her. And he does things to try and get close to her to try and get more information from her and it just spirals out of control from there. And again when reading this book I'm just struck by how well Jess writes. Like I am just a huge fan of her writing a style. I just think it's sophisticated and elegant and it just works even in a different genre than like more like high fantasy romance. Like this is paranormal romance but her writing still just comes across very well and it's very very good. And this story, oh my god, the tension and the spice between these two, it is a fast burn but like definitely enemies and it's just like this interesting dynamic and it is so good. And our girl Gwen, she's a plus size main character and Roman, he's a little husky, he has a man bun and I just love them. I just love them. This book is so so good which leads me into something a little bit later in this video that I'm so excited for but that is what I'm probably going to finish before the readathon starts because I'm not going to stop reading it to wait for the readathon to start, you know? Okay, so the other books I have on my TBR for the readathon, first we have Bewitched by Laura Thalassa, and I was actually sent this book by the publisher, um, yes, this art print. I read Rhapsodic by her, and I really liked that series, um, and so now this is her new series, and this is about a girl who is trying to, like, complete a quest to join a coven. She's a witch and it's kind of like a coven university and she is traveling somewhere to complete this quest. She basically, a supernatural force tries to 
drag her plane from the sky and so she like awakens this magic in her which then she crash lands in the jungle and using this power also devours her memories so she can't remember things um and when she finds the source of the attack she actually accidentally awakens this ancient evil demon and when he wakes up he thinks that Celine is his long lost wife that he hates and I, things just spiral out of control from there it has witches, demons, fantasy, but also more of like a paranormal like school setting and um yeah just based on the art it just seems super spicy and I know I like Laura Thalassa's books so I'm excited to pick this one up. I also want to pick up her Four Horsemen series. They have like the cool new covers so maybe I'll pick that up at some point in the future. Um okay so then next on the TBR I wanted to focus on some more physical books but here I have A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee and this is the first book. I've read the second book but I have not yet read... Wait, this is the second book. My gosh, where is it? Okay, well, this is what the cover of this second book like. looks like. A Kingdom of Blood and Betrayal. I know I have the third book somewhere around here. But I can't find it. So, this is the third book in the series. A Kingdom of Venom and Vows. This book, I think I started it. Um, and then I just... Life happened and I wasn't in the mood for a fantasy romance anymore, but I'm super excited to pick it back up again. This series is like really fun if you want a fantasy romance that veers more towards like the super spicy, fast paced action. Not a super lot of world building, but still enough to count. Um, but I just wouldn't say it's like a super intricate fantasy, it's more like fast burn action spice. So that is what I am here for. And in the first book, we follow Adara. She is basically the star-touched human. And because of this, she is promised to the Fae Prince. And being a star-touched human basically means that, like, you amplify the Fae's power. So she's promised to the Prince. And, like, I think after her 21st birthday, 18th birthday or something like that, she goes to the land of the Fae. And there she kind of doesn't really like the Fae that she's betrothed to, but... She has all of the sizzling chemistry and tension with this prince's half-brother who is kind of like the captain of the guard and like the black sheep of the family and they, their spiciness just like pops off. It's so good. So it also has these really cool like black M pages in it and I'm so excited. So that is that one. And then the third book is going to be on my Kindle and that is To Bleed a Crystal Bloom by Sarah A. Parker. I have seen a lot of fan art everywhere and I'm really intrigued. It's supposed to be a super dark Sleeping Beauty retelling um, and it definitely is a fantasy romance that I've heard is spicy but also like veers more towards like the darker end so it's almost like a dark romance fantasy romance. So I'm intrigued by that. I think there's some like interesting like captor captive elements there because it is a Rapunzel retelling so we'll see how I like it but other things coming up this weekend is I have decided I want to like I used to have one of my shelves be like a fantasy romance shelf and I want to redo that again just because I've been kind of doing different things as I have moved into this new space and I have more space for my books. So I have this shelf over here which right now has k-pop stuff on it and I want to get a shorter shelf to put the k-pop stuff on because like a lot of these shelves are like too big like I need like shorter shelves to like stack them and I want to get maybe something longer. And I do want to probably downsize this collection a bit because I really, I love all these groups that I have, but it's, K-pop collecting is just a lot. I haven't really been buying any albums. So I don't really know what to do with that stuff, um, but I would rather it be for my books. So I want to transform this back into like my fantasy romance shelf because I miss when it was that. I miss when it was that. So those are my reading plans, but now I have some fun unboxings. Okay, first is a package from BNN. So satisfying and da, 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 it's my copy of foxglove with the pink flowers and it has this end stamp and it has this end page um if you have been around my channel at all over here you know that belladonna was one of my favorite reads of last year and i'm so excited to read foxglove i'm probably going to pick it up after this readathon because i just can't wait to read it it's so it's so good i okay from jess wise cup i have a little pr package i'm so excited oh it's wax sealed 
I'm gonna open it along the time. Oh, yay. Okay, so these are some prints. I definitely can't show this one print on camera. Dang, that's spicy. Okay, so I got a little note and then I got, this is Gwen from Feathers from the Sky and this is Roman from Feathers from the Sky and um, this is the top half of the print and you can imagine like what else is going on but like yeah, I definitely cannot display that on my YouTube. But I love it. Okay, so let's see what else we have. Ooh. Ooh. I have a Roman candle, and it smells like mint, leather, and black moss. And it's a wooden weight candle. So, I open up the candle. It literally, like, it has this cool black and red thing, and it smells like a man. But, like... When you walk into Abercrombie and you're like, wow, that's like a manly perfume. Like, that's what it smells like. Got a little sticker that says, hello, sweetheart. Mint, because Roman is always having breath mints. Also, I'm obsessed with those lifesavers. Okay, let's see. What is this? Vampire teeth guide? Little adhesive fangs that you can put on. That's so cool. I've never seen that. Have a little feather bookmark. So good. Um, hello, yes, love this sticker. But, oh my gosh, there's so many cool things. This, oh my god, I have little heart, like a literal heart, like an anatomically correct heart earrings. I have this acrylic pin. Oh my god, last drop. These is a match thingy. That's cool. Oh, and then come on Aileen with the car because that's like the car. The car is like part of the story and it's like featured in the car. That's so cute. Ooh, here's the little pamphlet for the book. And then, oh, feather. okay, I am going to open this like for my TikTok. So I'm going to come back once this is open and film a TikTok opening it because it's kind of wild since it open. Okay, we're back to the ring light because it got dark out, but um, I unboxed it and I did not know it was going to be this special edition. <gasps> Do you see how shiny it is? What the hell? That's so gorgeous. Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. I am crying. Like metaphorically, but maybe a little physically. Like... Look at the page heading. This is like literally the prettiest book I have ever seen in my whole life. I am obsessed. I'm reading this book right now. It's so good, guys. I'm literally, after I finish filming this, I'm going to go sit on my couch and read it because like, oh, like, oh my God. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Wow. Thank you so much to Jess for sending this to me. I am super happy to just like support people that I love and authors that I love and I love this little fantasy romance community and I'm so excited and I'm literally gonna go cry over this book because like wow. It's just beautiful. All right so I will see you guys again tomorrow when the readathon starts and we'll get going with some fun times. I probably will be finished with this book by the time that the readathon starts, so I'll give you my final thoughts. And we're gonna start on Bewitched first, I think, unless I change my mind. But I'm feeling bewitched, so. Let's go. Hello besties. Tori and I just finished sprints. I have this little like sprinting nook that I set up in my book room. So it was really fun and I am currently reading Bewitched is the book that I started with and on sprints I got to page 186. We did three 45 minute sprints so I'm like actually super impressed with myself and I am loving this book so far because we follow Celine and she has this kind of magic where it like eats her memories every time she uses magic 
and she has to go on this magical quest and she ends up waking up this like um ancient evil that was cursed and he thinks that she is his dead wife and so he's like kind of stalking her when she comes back escapes and like goes back to this um her coven which is like a magical university and it's so intriguing the animal familiar in here which is really cool i love like animal familiars and so this is kind of like combining like a witchy cozy dark definitely not cozy but this is definitely combining like witchy vibes with like dark demon kind of vibes i'm not gonna say like what creature he is exactly um but it's so intriguing because he like thinks that she is his wife and it creates this so such good tension between them and where she's kind of not really sure like she has these like feelings in her mind and she doesn't know why she's acting the way that she is but it's also really interesting her as a character because she has so many gaps in her memory so it's really intriguing and i'm just like i'm so interested in like seeing like why this is happening and like what exactly is going on so it's definitely keeping me like super into the book so i'm gonna put this down for right now because i want to finish feathers from the sky i said i was gonna finish it before the readathon but i'm still gonna count the pages i read to finish um in this readathon and so i'm on page i'm at 78 percent and i actually have the physical book so let me see what page that is I am on page 324 so I have about 80 pages left right so I'm just gonna read through it the rest of the night but I'm gonna read it on my kindle because I don't want to crease this like super special edition and it's like very limited because the author only like made a certain amount just like for her PR box and I'm so excited so I will be reading this in bed and i was so inspired on sprints because tori had this like asmr room going in the background and i'm like i'm gonna lay in bed with this asmr room and read my book so i'm gonna count those pages because we're also doing like page counts as well as like books finished and then i am like i'm like so sucked into this one i'm almost halfway at this point where i kind of wanted to avoid this where i got so into this one and then i'm not done with this one but i'm like really just loving these both and they're kind of similar but different vibes because this is witches and this is vampires so i definitely just want to finish this so i don't like leave it hanging because i am enjoying it so much and loving it and then i definitely want to get back to this one because i'm also loving it so much so tomorrow don't really have too many plans besides obviously making time for the readathon i'm like feeling especially since i got literally half of one of my longest books on my tbr done tonight i'm like actually feeling really good about my readathon progress so i'll read this one and then finish this one read this one and i don't know if i'm gonna read to bleed a crystal bloom next or um the third one in the kingdom of stars and shadow series because that one's also really quick and i guess it depends on the length of to bleed a crystal bloom because if it's longer then i will probably go with kingdom of stars and shadows number three i forget the name of it at this point um first so that's my night hello everyone it is the next morning so it's saturday now and last night i finished feathers from the sky and i swear jess wise cup is an evil genius this ending was such a good plot twist and it's one of those ones that like makes sense when you think back on it but you still didn't see it coming and then like i want to like go reread it now to see if i can like pick up on all the hints that i just like didn't catch and i just like love that when like a book makes me want to throw it across the room because i'm just like oh my god so yeah this was amazing five stars please read it please support my fave just wise cup she's an amazing fantasy romance author also check out her um the divine between series which is i think i talked about it earlier in this vlog but please read that so this morning i already went to the gym came back and got my first pumpkin cold brew of the season so typically i hold off until september to buy this but it was just calling me i needed it so now i'm going to read bewitched it's about 12 so we have two hours until sprints and i read so much on sprints yesterday and i don't know i'm just like super into this book so i'm like pretty much halfway so i'm just gonna keep speeding through this and see where we're at at sprints maybe i'll be able to start a new book on sprints so that will be coming up soon
right, so we just finished with sprinting. I was on sprints for three hours and we were on for three hours last night too, which is crazy because I've never sprinted for that long, but I got so much reading done. So I finished Bewitched and you guys, this might be one of my top reads of the year. I feel like it just hit all of the right notes for fantasy romance. We had such an intriguing plot. The tension between these two characters was just kept up at such like a good pace the whole time. Like the tension between them never really dissipated. They were like constantly at each other's throat and it's such like an interesting, maybe kind of toxic um, environment <laughs> between these two characters. Like the push and the, it's just got like a, such a cool premise, such good tension, good spice because the tension between the characters is like kept up really well. And like, I was just so invested this whole time. I basically read this book completely on sprints and I'm just obsessed with it. I'm just obsessed with it. Five stars. This is definitely a standout book for me. Like, I am obsessed with it, which is so good because I also just finished Feathers from the Sky, which I'm also obsessed with. So, like, I just have, like, hit after hit, and I'm excited. Then I started the last book in the Kingdom of Stars and Shadows series. I honestly did not read too much of this on the live because I was kind of tired at that point from and I was just like still riding the high from finishing Bewitched um, but I did start a little bit of this when the book first came out and then just like life happened it wasn't like I didn't like it but I honestly don't remember anything of what I read it just it wasn't the time when I picked it up um, but now it is the time now it is the time and I am once again like I'm falling back into this world it's just like very easy to follow it's so fun and fast-paced and I am you know our characters are in a bit of a precarious situation and so I'm excited to keep reading this and then there also is a spin-off following Talia and um, Soren from their side characters in this book and they're so much fun and it has a really pretty cover yeah it is a good time I am really tired now though I think I had too much caffeine today and I'm kind of crashing because normally when I go to Dunkin this is like so I know that I'm very sensitive to caffeine so when I go to Dunkin I usually get half calf and I get that every morning and then I have two Diet Pepsis during the day and I had a pumpkin cold brew this morning which has way more caffeine than I'm used to and I still drank my Diet Pepsis for the day because I guess I'm stupid and didn't think that through but now I'm like I feel like I'm having like a headache from just like too much caffeine and i just kind of need to like lie down like i literally feel like i'm crashing so i think it'll also be good too because it will refresh me in between the two books because sometimes jumping from book to book like i'm just, just like riding the high of finishing feathers from the sky and bewitched that i'm like not totally ready to jump into this one but i am so excited and then since this is a 48 hour readathon i think it's a good time to read my next installment of yona of the dawn i love this manga i I was talking to Tori about how like I love manga but like since it's so quick to read through I don't like to like physically buy a lot of them but I am like buying Yon of the Dawn like specifically to collect the series it's on like volume 30 something and I'm only up to 11 and I haven't read it in like a year usually I was reading like one volume a month for a while but a lot of these went out of stock with like COVID paper shortages so it finally like was back in stock I actually was at the bookstore with Court and Taz in New Jersey and we found this copy so I think I'm gonna read this too because it just is a good way to like break up the time during a 48 hour readathon so yeah this is what I'm going to focus on for the next portion of the readathon and then my next book is to bleed a crystal bloom I don't know if I will actually be able to finish that book. That seems like a lot, especially because Bewitched is such a long book. But I, if I can like get through these and start the next book, then I will be happy. But I need to take a nap and I need to actually set an alarm so that I don't sleep through the rest of the book. But yeah, I just need a little lie down because I'm a little bit sleepy. Wow, my battery just died in like the two seconds I was doing this. Honestly, I need a new battery because it's not really lasting well, but let's just go real quick update before I put this on to charge. I got to page 119 of Kingdom of Venom and Vows, and it's so fun so far. I'm back in this world, and I don't know why I put this book down when I was reading it, but I guess I'm glad that I'm picking it up again when I'm in the mood for it because I am really enjoying it, and it's so fun being back with these characters. Like, it's like I get... It's one of those fantasy romances, fast paced, lots of spice, and I put it down last night, but I think I was about to get to like the first 
spicy scene and honestly like the villain is pretty villainous in this book as well so I'm just having a great time with this. I'm having a great time and I'm definitely going to pick up the spin-off book very soon because I want to read it. I feel like I've been doing this thing where I'm like I want to read. I feel like I've been going through I haven't been listening to my mood reading instincts. That's what I have been saying. Because if you've been watching my TBRs, I'm like, I want to read more of my physical books, blah, 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 blah. And like not read as many books on Kindle. And then I just went back to reading fantasy romance like on Kindle or reading back to the books that are really speaking out to me. I'm like, why should I try to force myself to read things that are not speaking to me in the moment? Like I do want to read through my physical books, but like there is no pressure. There's no pressure. I need to stop putting my pressure on myself to read a certain way like when I make these TBRs I almost don't want to make a TBR for September because I just want to see where life takes me if I don't make one but anyways that's a side thought I am about to go to Dunkin and get my morning coffee and read my book with my morning coffee I was gonna maybe do some shelf organization but like my book room is in such bad shape it's in such bad shape and it needs a lot of TLC, so I don't know if I'm prepared yet. Hello, so it's late. I'm like ready to go to bed if you can't tell by my hairstyle, but I read four books in the readathon. One of them I had started before, and I actually also read a fifth book that I started during the end of the readathon. Guys, we sprinted for 10 hours this weekend. We did three hours on Friday, three hours on Saturday, and four hours today. So I'm like pretty. Like, you know when you just read so much that you're like, okay, I need to, like, not look at a book for a while? That's how I feel, but I also feel, like, super satisfied and happy with how the readathon went this weekend. So, firstly, I finished Feathers from the Sky by Jess Wisecup, and this is a special edition with some really cool foiling. This is a vampire and vampire hunter romance. So amazing. We have a plus-size family main character, a husky male main character, and, like, there's... It's hot. It's so good. It's so good. And it also deals a lot with depression and it was just beautiful. It was everything. I loved it. Then we have Bewitched. Wait, so Feathers from the Sky, the Five Stars, Chef's Kiss, amazing. And then we have Bewitched by Laura Thalassa, which surprised me how much I loved it. Like it wasn't, I didn't think I wasn't going to like it, but it's literally, I think, one of the top books of the year for me. I am just obsessed with it. I thought the use of her memory loss, like, as a tool for unreliable narrator, so well done. So well done. It was just, the way Laura Thalassa keeps up the tension between the characters, so it's like, you're just always like, oh my god, I want more, I want more, I want more. It's so addicting, and it's just paced so well, and I loved that we got, like, part ancient evil entity part witchy cozy academy vibes like it was just everything and yeah i loved it so so much i will be talking about this book a lot from here on out on my channel then after i finished that i started kingdom of venom and vows by holly renee and this is the third book in the kingdom of stars and shadows series and honestly this book low plot high yeah I feel bad calling it like low pop plot but like the plot and the world building not super intricate like there is a political situation going on but it's really about the relationship between the characters and the steam it's just a fantasy setting for steam and I ended up giving this one four stars I thought it was good but this one definitely had the lead it was weird it had like 100 pages of plot then like 150 pages of just like straight up smut for the whole time with not much else happening and then we had like the conclusion felt kind of rushed so 
the pacing was a bit weird but I love the characters and I love their relationship but I do think <sighs> sometimes the best things about characters are like the tension and the build-up to the relationship and seeing how they get together and once they're together there needs to be something else other than them just hooking up because otherwise like how are you going to continue to drive the momentum of the story forward so with this one i feel like this book kind of fell into the okay well now the characters are together like they're just constantly banging so i think it's um it's interesting i think that there are authors that have been able to kind of do it better once the characters are like keeping things interesting even though the characters are in a like a re established relationship but i mean like i still enjoyed it it's still it's still a spicy fun time but it's definitely veers more towards on the spicy fun times low plot vibes and spice side of fantasy romance um, okay, so then after that, I decided to read a fantasy romance manga. This is Yona of the Dawn. I like reading manga, but I've discovered that um, it takes up a lot of space, and it takes me like a half hour to read a volume. So I am committed to collecting one manga, and that is Yona of the Dawn, and it's about this girl Yona. She's a princess, and basically her cousin comes to like throw a coup and kills her father and she has to go on the run with her bodyguard hack oh my god i love hack i love hack i love them and she kind of has to go and find these like dragon guardians and it's such a fun it's like action but also it's consider, con considered considered sojo though so it's more like cutesy like relationships between all of them and like all the banter between all like the dragon guardians that she finds and hack like it's just such a fun series and i have read like I have watched half the manga too. I'm like sad I didn't get a second season, but I'm kind of like savoring that. But yeah, I just had a lot of fun reading this next installment and hopefully I can keep getting my hands on more in the series so I can continue on because I just want, I want to have like one complete manga that I just like really love and Yona of the Dawn is that for me because I've loved everything that I've read. Then lastly, I started House of Roots and Ruin by Erin A. Craig. This one is less smut heavy because I feel like after Kingdom of Venom and Vows, I'm like, okay, I need something with a little bit different of a flavor and I don't know where my dust jacket went I was like while I was on the live I just started to get a headache from like sitting there reading also my setup in this room is actually not comfortable so I sat in my like office chair for like 10 hours this weekend reading and it was actually <laughs> I do not have like a good setup in this book room but I made sacrifices for the live anyways so I just was like feeling kind of tired by the end so I ended up uh, messing around with my book cart which you saw so for contextualization, like that was happening while I was during one of the sprints where I was just like, I can't sit here anymore, but I still had really fun sprinting. I just needed like a break. Logically, I know that the dust jacket is in here somewhere, but I can't find it. And I'm just, I think I just need to go to bed. I just need to go to bed because I can't. I can't. So instead of stressing myself out about that, anyways, I just started this one and it's like a gothic horror and I love gothic horror and I feel like it's a gothic horror with flowers. I think it's like a good balance of still having definitely a romance flavor to it, but also um, not just straight up smut because sometimes if you read too much smut, like I feel like you gotta, you gotta pace it out. And this is what I've been dealing with this year. I started talking about this earlier, but I think I kind of, um, my camera was dying where I just like I'm like okay I'm gonna do this thing either whether it's like I'm gonna read a bunch of thrillers on audiobook and I'm gonna um which called? I'm only gonna read the books on my shelf and then I'm like why am I like forcing myself to go with these things instead of just like listening to myself and I love the concept of TVRs but I wonder if I'm gonna get real with you guys here. I wonder if I didn't have to make them for content, if I would have such rigid rules on myself and force myself to like constantly be making these lists and then like feeling upset when I don't accomplish this list that I set out for myself. So I'm kind of having like a, okay, well, if I don't do a TBR, then like what am I going to do to fill that like space in the content because they are very fun and very easy to film but it's like I almost like ugh, I don't know I'm having like an internal crisis also this is getting way off topic of the fantasy romance readathon but that's what I'm dealing with 
honestly would love to hear from you guys also wait something about the lives that was so much fun is that I, we actually got so much like interaction with people that were like on the reading sprints and that's really exciting to me because sometimes i think as a creator it's hard to like have like a in the moment reaction and also i don't do a lot of lives so i didn't realize that people are like looking for a reading sprints and will like interact with you so i definitely want to host more reading sprints maybe just like solo or like invite some different friends on just because i think it was so fun but i definitely need a better setup in this book room to be cozy because i was not cozy anyways um that is just like the million bajillion thoughts going through my head when i get tired i get chatty and i can just tell i'm like i'm exhausted at this point i really just want to go to bed for four books for the readathon i think that is handy dandy wonderful beautiful and I am going to be starting my next read, House of Roots and Ruin, which is a good late summer, because it's got like flowers and greenhouses, gothic, spooky horror vibe. So I feel like it's a good end of summer horror book. And I'm definitely reaching for something more YA after fantasy romance, because you also don't want to fatigue yourself too much on one genre. So I am excited to continue on with my journey of reading but i had such a fun weekend with you guys thank you again to tori for organizing this and putting this together i was so happy when you asked me to co-host and i think i just had a wonderful weekend with everyone and i got so so much reading done i think um the final page count is probably like in the 800s for me it's fun it's such a productive weekend and i feel well rested and like i finally got a weekend where i just got to do a lot of reading that i have not had that time to myself in a while so i was very happy Alright, so I hope you guys had a great time coming along on this journey of our readathon and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.